tell of wool and merchant traders, how the backs of sheep made riches, how the finest churches in the land were built on thread and stitches, tell as how the Roman church was questioned in the land and faltered, how King Henry's lust destroyed its role and church was ever altered. Tell, alas, the strife of schism, how the printed word provided reasoned light to new religions, how belief in truths divided man from Han and home from home, and tell the names of three made holy, Spicer, Coberly, and Maundrell, tried at Sarum, burned so cruelly. Now Z. It were that power of money bestowed on the traders of sheep's fleeces and the producers of woven cloths for wealthy backs that paid for so many great churches, especially in the early 14th century when the simple early English Gothic, like year at Salisbury, reached a more ornate decorated style. But then the Black Death put a stop to work, and over the following century a more refined, that is, easier, style emerged, which we calls perpendicular, and some of the finest churches in the land were raised, such as those at Long Melford and Lavenham and Blybra, and even Fairford just beyond the northern boundary of Wiltshire, a church that boasts today some of the finest late medieval stained glass still surviving. The reformation of religious beliefs and practices were taking place in Europe, and new interpretations of the Bible, now widely printed, were putting the Roman Catholic Church on the back foot. But in Britain, that horrible Henry VIII pursued his own reformation, and chiefly for his own benefit, as enabling him to get a divorce from Catherine of Aragon, and at the same time enriching himself by raping and pillaging all the abbeys, friaries, nunneries, and so on. Thick new Church of England, we Henry at its head, were still basically Catholic in all it did, and he liked it that way too. But a good number of the churchmen wanted a new purity in their religion, and embraced the simpler services and Bible study of the European Protestants. When Henry died, and the brief reign of his child son Edward VI were over, Henry's daughter Mary, a most devout Catholic, took the throne, and immediately set about reversing the changes which had been made over the previous decade. Mary were a tough egg, a real nasty piece, and any priest who didn't return wholeheartedly to the full-scale Catholic rites she cherished were found out, and many on them were burned at the stake as heretics. John Maundrell were a yeoman farmer from Keevil in the middle of Wiltshire, who took a keen interest in the new Bible of William Tyndale, and were readily converted to the Protestant way of thinking. He were spoken of as a good and charitable man, but when he questioned the continued use of the holy bread and holy cup in King Henry's church, he were prosecuted and sentenced to a public humiliation, being made to walk round Vise's marketplace dressed in a white sheet and carrying a candle. When Queen Mary's reign of much heavier persecution come along a decade later, Maundrell had been a wandering in Gloucestershire, spreading his word and come back to Wiltshire, join in with a stonemason named John Spicer and a tailor named William Coberly, when in March of 1556 they disrupted a Catholic procession at Keevil, claiming that the worshipping of a wooden idol were not the true religion, and when they called the idea of purgatory the Pope's pinfold, like a sort of cattle fold that is a quick way of making money, they were put in the stocks locally and later consigned to the jail at Fisherton by Salisbury. At their trial, Aldry stated they believed in God the Father and in the Son and the Holy Ghost, the twelve articles of the Creed and the Holy Scripture from the first of Genesis to the last of Revelation, but said that the Popish Mass was abominable idolatry. Maundrell said that wooden images were good to roast a shoulder of mutton on, but were evil in church, whereby idolatry was committed. On the 24th of March 1556 they were taken to the place of execution, between Salisbury and Wilton, thought now to be the junction of the Wilton and Vises roads, a site used for later executions. 
As they went, John Spicer said to the officer, Oh, Master Sheriff, now you must become the butcher. They knelt down and sacredly said their prayers, their shirts having been removed, and the sheriff offered each the Queen's pardon, to which Maundrell replied, Not for all Salisbury. And Spicer said, Thick be the most joyful day that ever I saw. Then the flames were lit to the faggots and the timbers beneath them, and the dree Salisbury martyrs were gruesomely burned at the stake. It were such awful, terrible acts as thick, which sent the minds of the English surely against the Catholic Church, and for the Protestant Church in the centuries to come.